Today, guys, is your lucky day. Hey, this is one of my favorite lessons. In fact, the rest of this unit gets pretty awesome, all right? So what we're going to be doing um, the next couple of days is we're going to be working with distance rate time problems. Um, and we're going to do this by using by solving multi-step equations, which is why we've been studying all these equations. All right, so lesson 2-7 um, is what you should be looking at. So uh, here's the formula, the basic formula, distance equals rate times time. Um, it, that's just a basic mathematical formula we all should know. Now, uh, here's how it works, you know, so if I, you know the speed somebody is traveling, so let's say somebody is traveling at 60 miles per hour, and you know how long, T is your time, let's say they're traveling for four hours, then you should be able to tell me the distance that they travel simply by multiplying their speed times their time. So in this case, I would know that um, I could have covered 240 miles at that rate and over that four-hour period of time. It works the opposite, too. If, if you know that um, you need to go 240 miles and you can predict that you're going to uh, travel at 60 miles per hour, you can figure out how long the time it's going to take you to get there simply by dividing 240 by 60. So it's a handy little formula I uh, use often in everyday life when people go on trips. Okay? Now, um, we're going to be doing a lot more with it than that, obviously. But anyway, there are three types of distance problems we're going to be solving. There are catch-up problems, and an example of that would be, um, you know, train A leaves the station at 9 o'clock traveling 60 miles per hour. Train B leaves the station at the same time, 9 o'clock traveling 100 miles per hour. Uh, how long does it take the second train to catch up with the first one or something like that? So this you're trying to get uh, figure out how long it takes for two vehicles, transportation modes, to catch up with each other, okay? Return trips, exactly like it sounds, you know, how long does it take to go there and turn around and come back, okay? And then opposite direction problems would be like, you know, if one train's going east, one train's going west, how long does it take them uh, before they're, let's say, 800 miles apart from each other, okay? So that would be uh, opposite direction. Now, we're not going to do all these types today because it gets kind of complicated. What we're going to focus on today is the first type, which are catch-up problems. So I'm going to do two examples with you, and then you should be able to practice some on your own. Okay? So let's look at example one. It says a train leaves a station traveling at 50 miles per hour. Two hours later, and what I'm highlighting, you should highlight or underline in your notes as well. Two hours later... A second train leaves on a parallel track, traveling the same direction, that's important, but they're traveling at 60 miles per hour, okay? There you go. And how many hours, all right? So that tells you that you're looking for hours, so you're looking for time. When I think about my distance rate time formula, the question says in how many hours, and obviously you're looking for time, okay? So, and how many hours will the second train catch up with the first train? Okay, now, uh, when we do these types of problems, guys, we're going to assume that, you know, there's nobody stopping and we're traveling at a constant speed. Okay, just so, you know, the numbers all work out. We're not going to say, well, what if they stop and take a break? We're, no, we're not going to do any of that. Okay, so um, here's my suggestion on how we solve these. Okay, so what you're going to do, and I promise this works every time. Okay, you can't get them wrong if you follow this, this method, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to make a table, all right? And your table always needs to be set up like this. So I'm going to start by drawing me a table, okay? And I'm going to put in the first column, right, I am going to put the object, the vehicles, whatever, okay? So, uh... Let's see, well, I've got two trains here. I'm just going to, you have to call it something. So I'm going to call the first one train A, and I'll call the second one train B. Okay, so here are my two trains. Now, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to label three other columns. So let me make three columns. All right. And then at the top, let's label the first column is going to represent the rate at which each is traveling. Okay, remember R stands for rate. Okay, 
The second column is going to represent the time, how long it takes them to travel. Now, remember your formula that I gave you earlier. It says distance is equal to rate multiplied by the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the values that we put in our chart for the rate, and we're going to multiply that times the values we put in the chart for time. And if I multiply rate times time, it should equal the distance the train traveled. So all I did is kind of, you know, flip the formula. If distance is equal to rate times time, then rate times time equals distance. So uh, this way works much better when you're filling out your chart, and I'll show you why in a few moments, okay? So make sure you got those headings um, on your little chart or table, okay? And once you've got that set up, now it's just a matter of plugging in what you know, okay? So this is a great way to, uh, you know, figure out what information you know and what information you don't know. All right, so let's look at train A and let's try to figure out the rate it's traveling, the speed, rate is speed. Um, the first train leaves traveling 50 miles per hour, okay? So here for train A, I'm gonna put 50, okay? And I can, you can assume that's miles per hour. If you would like to put uh, miles per hour here, you can, all right? Do you know how fast the second train is traveling? Yes, I do. Right here, it's traveling at 60 miles per hour. So I'll put 60 miles per hour, okay? Now, um, time. Do you know how long each train traveled? Now, I do not, when I talk about time, I'm talking about the total distance or total time. You do not know the total time each train traveled. Now, what you do know is that uh, the second train if you reread re -read this sentence right here, the second train left two hours later. Two hours, says two hours later, a second train leaves a parallel track traveling in the same direction and so forth. So, what we're going to do is we have to, T is going to be our variable. Because go back to what the question is asking in how many hours, right? So, that tells you that T will be our variable because we're looking for time, all right? So since I don't know how, how long each train traveled, I have to put a variable here. So I'm going to let train A say it traveled T hours. I don't know. I have to call it something. But I do know that if train B left the same place, okay, traveling the same direction and so forth, two hours later than train A, then however long train A traveled, train B would have traveled two hours less. Now, let's think about that because everybody wants to put the opposite there because they see two hours later and they want to add. Now, let's think about it. If train A left at T hours and train B was sitting there waiting for, for two hours before it took off, then when they meet up at some point, train B is going to catch up with train A, train B would have actually traveled two hours less time than train A because it waited two hours before taking off. You really got to think about that. So if you want to pause and kind of think about that, then you can do that, right? It makes sense that train B is going to travel less time. Look at the picture or look at your chart. It's traveling at a faster rate. So if I got two trains, I'll think of it like this. I got two trains going in the same direction, okay, if one is going faster than the other, then where they're going to meet, wherever they're going to meet, one is going to be traveling at a faster rate, so it's going to get there at a faster time, I mean, you know, in less time, okay? All right. Now, based on our formula, um, rate times time equals distance, so what you're going to do now is you're going to multiply the things that you have in your chart. So train A is 50 miles per hour for T hours, so the distance train A traveled can be represented by the expression 50T, because you multiply, I'm going to put an equal here if that helps, you multiply the rate times the time, so I just write 50T. Same thing with train B, all right? I got to multiply 60 times the time that train B traveled which is represented by the expression T minus 2, okay? And I should probably fix that a little prettier. Okay, so it looks like that. 
All right, now if you need to stop and rewind and go back and see how we set the chart up, feel free to do so. Okay. The key thing about this problem, whenever you're doing catch-up problems, okay, you got to picture this in your mind. Um, the trains, even though they're going at different rates or different speeds, they're going to cover the same distance. It's just one is getting there faster than the other, right? In it's getting there in less time because it's going at a faster speed. But the distance they travel is actually the same because one's catching up with the other, right? So make a note on your paper that when you do catch-up problems, make a note, when you do catch-up problems, um, the, the the two things, whatever they have, they have an equal distance, okay? Because that tells you how to set up your equation. Because I'm going to go to this last column in my chart where I have my expressions that represent the distance train A traveled and the distance train B traveled. And I'm going to set it up like this. I'm going to set uh, the distance for train A. Now, I'm not going to write all that out in words. See if this makes sense. D for distance for train A has to equal the distance traveled by train B. All right? So I'm going to go to my chart and find the distance for train A. And if I look, it's right here. Okay? The distance train A traveled was 50T. Okay, we wrote that as an algebraic expression because we don't know the time. The distance train B traveled, we also wrote as an algebraic expression as 60 multiplied by T minus 2. All right? So if I solve this um, equation for T, all right, that'll give me some time, which is what the question is asking for. So now it's just a matter of manipulation. All right? At this point, there's really nothing new. The new part is setting up that chart. Okay, if you don't get your chart set up, then you're going to have the wrong equation. All right, but let's go ahead and solve the equation. I'll go through this a little faster. So on the left-hand side, I just have 50t. The right-hand side, of course, we have to distribute. So that would give me 60t minus 120, 60 times 2. I've got to combine my t's. Now, I know that subtracting 60 t's is not really what I would want to do because that's going to leave me with negative 10 t's over here. But it's okay. It's going to work out nice, see? Because now when I bring down this 120, you got to bring that negative with it. So you actually have a negative 120 here. And a negative divided by a negative works out nicely to a positive, in this case, 12. Okay? Guys, you know you've done something wrong if you work out a problem and you get a negative amount of time. Time is never negative. Makes sense. You can't go back in time. Time must always be a positive number. Okay? So, I've gotten 12 hours. Does that answer the question? Well, I don't know. Let's go back and read the question. The question said, how many hours will the second train, will it take, you know, before the second train catches up with the first? Well, let's go look at uh, your chart and see what the variable t represented in your chart. Okay, so let's go back up here. T actually represents the time the first train traveled. So the first train traveled for a 12-hour time period, right? But the question that you were asked was, in how many hours will it take before the second train catches up with the first? So I'm actually interested in the time that the second train traveled, train B traveled. And if I looked in my chart right here, it traveled t minus 2, or t was 12. We just solved that. So 12 minus 2 gives me 10. Okay. That's the answer to the question. Okay. It took 10 hours okay, before the second train caught up with the first one. The first train traveled 12 hours. The second one only traveled 10 because it was going at a faster pace. So obviously... It would cover the same distance in less time, all right? Okay. Let's try another one. It gets easier, I hope. Okay? Let's look at number two. Sonny was riding a bicycle at 18 miles per hour. Sonny riding the bicycle at 18 miles per hour leaves town. Four hours later, well, hold on, let me underline this. So he's riding a bike at 18 miles per hour. Four hours later, Cher leaves town from the same starting point, traveling the same direction at an average speed of 24 miles per hour. Oh, Sonny, Cher, get it, Sonny and Cher. Oh, it may be before your time. That's all right. So, 
how long does it take Cher to catch up with Sunny? So again, if I'm asking for how long, I'm looking for a time. Okay, and I always like to make a note. You know, what am I looking for? Sometimes I may be asking for a rate. Sometimes I may be asking for a distance. In this question, I'm asking for time. How long does it take before Cher catches up to Sunny? Now, how do I know Cher is going to catch up with Sunny? Yeah, Cher's traveling at 24 miles per hour. Poor Sunny's only going 18 miles per hour. So obviously, Cher is going to cover the, the same distance in less time because she's going at a faster pace. All right, now, let's set up our chart. I always start by setting me a chart up. So here we go. Make me one of these little charts again. And um, in this case, I don't have train A and train B. All right, I've got two people. And instead of calling them people one and people two, let's assign them by their names. I've got Sunny. And we've got share. Here are the two people in the problem. Okay. Now, I got three columns I have to set up here. First column always represents your rate. The second column is your time, and we multiply our rate times time, and that will give us an expression that we will write in that third column or last column for distance. Okay. So let's go fill in what we know. Do I know the rate or speed at which Sunny was traveling? Yes. It says in the problem that he was going 18 miles per hour, so 18. Do I know the speed or rate at which Cher was traveling? Yes, she was going 24 miles per hour, okay? Now, I don't know how long either one of them traveled. All I know is that four hours later, Cher left town, okay? So let's say Sonny was traveling T hours. I don't know how long he traveled. I don't know if it, this was a 10-hour trip or, I don't know, travel two hours. But I do know that if Sunny started traveling and four hours later Cher started, that means Cher actually traveled four hours less or four hours fewer than Sunny did because she sat there and waited for four hours, then she began her trip, okay? So... She's going to catch up with Sunny at some point, even though she left four hours later, because she's going at a faster pace. Okay, so again, she's covering less time, and um, she's covering the same distance, sorry, the same distance in less time because she's going at a faster pace. Okay, now, um, last column. The last column is where we end up getting our equations from, so make sure you put your, the right expressions here. All right, so if rate times time equals the distance, Sunny would be 18 times T, which we're going to write as 18T. Share would be 24 multiplied by T minus 4. Okay? Now, remember, I'm trying to figure out when, how long it's going to take Share to catch up with Sunny. So at some point, their distance they have traveled is the same. They, they reach a point where the distance they've traveled is the same, okay? So this is what I see. Um, I see that the distance traveled by Sunny must equal the distance traveled by Cher, okay? And our, we're going to get our equation from this last column right here. This information right here gives you your equation, all right? So if the distance Sunny traveled is 18t, and it must equal the distance share traveled, which is 24 multiplied by t minus 4, then I'm going to do what it says. I'm going to set those two things equal, and I'm going to solve for t. So now it's just a matter of uh, doing our calculation. Okay, so let's do that. Distributing on the right, 24t minus, and 24 times 4 would be 96. And again, you know, I would normally not want to subtract 24 T's uh, because I'm going to get a negative amount of T's on the left-hand side, right? So that would be negative 6 T's here. But it's okay because when I bring down this 96, I have to bring the minus or the negative with it, which works out perfectly because now when we divide both sides by a negative 6, I end up with a positive variable for T, and I end up with a positive amount of time. And 6 goes into 96, 16 times, I believe. And since this is time, and our time in this case is miles per hour, or, you know, hours, because everything's in miles per hour, 
it looks like t is equal to 16 hours. Now, again, this is why everybody misses these problems. It's a shame to do all this work and then miss the problem because you don't answer the question that's being asked. What does t represent? Well, let's go back to our chart. t represents the amount of time, look right here, t represents the amount of time Sonny traveled. So Sonny traveled, he rode his bike for 16 hours. Okay. Cher traveled 16 minus 4. She only traveled 12 hours. Okay, because remember, she waited four hours before going. She left four hours after him. So she only traveled 12 hours. Okay, at that point, um, they have met up. Their distance they have traveled is the same. Okay, let's we'll see. Does the question ask for Sunny or Cher? The question says, how long does it take Cher? to catch up with Sonny. It took her 12 hours to catch up with him. Okay, so 12 hours before Cher caught up with Sonny. Okay, now these take a little bit of um, really processing and thinking about. This isn't something I'm gonna leave that comes naturally so um, you know or easy so take your time rewind this work the problems again and uh, see how it goes and I think I've got five for you to practice with now on your own okay all right have a great afternoon guys and I will see you tomorrow